Ladies and gentlemen, it is I, the Great Lang, and I'd rather be doing anything else. However, I was unfortunate enough to have witnessed more of these Let's Play videos, to which I was blessed with total disgust. It seems I have no choice but to show the world how to do this right, since everyone else is dumb and wrong. For example, I watched this here, Game Grumps, an internet video series in which a chinless Sasquatch and his failed clone of Howard Stern work together to prevent their couch from floating to the ceiling, a struggle supplemented by their mysterious fascination with pretending to play video games while simultaneously pretending to be funny. Wait a minute, what the fuck is that thing? Like hell, I'm playing the game with that abomination on the screen. That thing looks like it walked right out of the circus. I remember when my uncle tried to start a circus of beavers, he caught him. Oh, wait. I, I already, uh said that. Well, it looks like some kind of sideshow freak anyway. Kind of like my cousin's friend Burgle. That was her name, Burgle, because she burgled all the food. Legends say she had two stomachs, but then ate one of them. She devoured anything that came within delicious proximity of her merciless mandibles. When she wasn't eating, however, she was obsessed with those new cellular telephones that were becoming such a big deal. And this one time, she was playing shitty Tetris on her cellular telephone, and she thought the squares were Pez, so she ate the phone. When she went back to her job at the dunk tank, people realized it was a lot more entertaining to hit her in the stomach to trigger cell phone noises. What they didn't know was that she had an outstanding debt with the Mafia, whom dragged her off the dunk tank and kicked the crap out of her. With every foot-induced impact, she bellowed out a different ringtone. She wailed all the classic ringtones. Oh Susanna, Badaneri, Turkish March, Morning Brisk, London Bridge is Falling Down. She was taken to a hospital and sadly she didn't make it. Her last words were, Message LG. The person you are trying to reach is unavailable. Please leave your tone after the message. Message! I had these words engraved on her tombstone. Oh, that Dr. Robotnik. It'd be really nice just to take a day off with him, go spend some time together at a mini golf course. I'd complain about how it's a game for babies and he'd eat all the chili cheese fries, and then he'd probably just set the place on fire and reconstruct it in his image. But you know, it's uh, it's about the journey, not the destination. Hi there, Mr. Lang. Oh, look everyone, it's Saki. I didn't know you'd be joining us today. Well, sure. It's a great day to play video games for the internet. No, it fucking isn't. Anyway, I just wanted to stop by to tell you how great you are. Did you have any news? Would you look at the time? I have a meeting to get to. Goodbye, Lang. Okay, Saki, fuck off now, thanks. You know, I've been wondering what's up with all these meetings Saki goes to. He keeps disappearing in the dryer with all my other socks. I'm beginning to suspect he's a white supremacist. I mean, he wears the white robe, or he sort of is one, I guess. And he keeps making all those weird comments, like, Someone should really do something about all those filthy kites! I guess I should have put two and two together. I used to have another sock puppet. His name was Blackie. I'm, uh... I'm not sure what happened to him. That reminds me of the time I became a chef. Me, not some guy named Gary. I wrote, happened, it happened to me. It's it's a true story. I was looking for entry to the workforce and upon gazing at the mind-rendingly boring newspaper print, I realized my life's calling. I was to become a chef. While I had no ambitions before this moment, I was certain at this late time in my life that this must be my destiny. I plucked the lint from my pockets, brushed my hair, combed my teeth, and put fresh lint in my pockets, and set out to fulfill my life's true path. When I arrived at the establishment, I noticed a sign upon the window that was covered in mysterious runes, and in small print at the bottom, hiring at once. This was it. I was going to become chef. Carpet DM, as they say, which is British for seize the rug. I opened the door, which sounded the rustic bells, chiming like angels heralding my arrival at the building that smelled of fish and sandals, bearing the stains of smattered sauce on the walls. I could read them like memories, and they seemed to say, Americans eat here. How enthralling that I soon would be feeding my fellow countrymen. Confident in my pocket lint, I stepped into the greasy kitchen and sought after the manager who would be guiding my fate. I observed the disheveled stacks of metal pots that were caked in layers of forgotten meals. I marveled at the sight of an unidentifiable ooze leaking from beneath the stove, wondering what magical nutritious secrets it must hold. Like a deranged flash, a man of lemony tint stepped forth and pierced me with his thin knife-like eyes. He shouted at me in his chinky gobbledygook, what with his chings and chongs and gibberish that would make even the sanest of men turn mad. His voice resonated with a familiar Amidst his incoherent gook babble, he thrust a spatula into my hand and pointed at an apron. At last, my life would be complete. I donned the apron and began to search the kitchen for the ingredients I would need to create my first meal. I mustn't keep those men and women waiting. Undoubtedly, their inhuman body ratios were shortening their lifespans, so every second counts. I plundered the cupboard and discovered in the back, behind the flour and rubber noodles, a perfectly good rat, a succulent dish just waiting to be. I plucked the rat by its foot, and goodness did he put up a fight. But I got him over that darn stovetop. I must put 
these profusely bleeding bites out of my mind? The customer comes first. I turn the stove on max, and a column of flame bursts from the grill, completely engulfing the rat and barely missing my hand. After a momentary shrieking squeak that reverberated throughout the kitchen, I dialed down the stove and witnessed the beauty of my first cuisine, the smoldering rat's foot that lay in my open palm. It only needed garlic salt as the finishing touch, and with a graceful swoop, I placed it on the plate and adorned it with parsley. Now it was ready to serve. With one hand, I swiftly brought forth the meal, yet there was no one at the table. Ah, they must be getting their checkbook. Suddenly, the crazy yellow restaurant manager rushed out of the kitchen, screaming in his ancient tongues, and chased me out of the restaurant. In a dazed sprint to escape, I couldn't anticipate the placement of the door, and jumped through the window, exploding shards of glass across the sidewalk as I scrambled away from the angry kung fu man. After running for what felt like a marathon, I seemed to have lost him. I was getting tired. Really tired. Like, wow. I just, uh... I just needed to close my eyes for a bit. I settled on the bare sidewalk, and before closing my eyes, I could see through the blurry haze the foaming open sores on my hand. Ah well, I'll have to take care of it later. A man needs his sleep. I woke up later in my home. I'm not sure how I ended up there. I looked outside my window and found a barbed wire fence surrounding my lawn. Yeesh, there goes my neighbor overreacting again. I'll have to try and convince him that teenagers in black clothes are not out to kill him. They're people just like you and me. I turned around and made my way towards the bathroom, but my legs were awfully wobbly and I fell onto the floor. In the soft embrace of the carpet, I recognized the symbolism of this moment. I had done it. I seized the rug. I lived out my dream of becoming a chef. Oh, that's, uh, that's the guy. Hold on, I'll be right back. No. No, I don't want any subscribers. I told you what happens. Just give me my fucking mail. Okay, I'm back. That was the mail. I got fan mail. I'm going to read it now. This is the fan mail part. This fan mail comes from Julie. It says, Dear Mr. Lang, why did you skip all the slot machines in the casino level? I'm watching you play through your window. Sincerely, Julie. I have read some whoppers in my day, but I believe we'll have to present this comment to the International Committee of Fuckwad Affairs and convince them to raise the ceiling on the fuckwad appraisal spectrum just to make room for this one. I think I remember there used to be that television series where homosexuals try to make straight people gay. Well, I felt this created an unfair imbalance, so I planned my own opposite television series about making gay men straight. It's called... Fags to Bitches. Oh shit, it's Jamal. Hang on, give me a minute first. Not now, Jamal. I'm doing a video for that there internet. You know, you'd probably know about it if you weren't living in a goddamn cave. <laughs> no, I'm not paying you back for the tuba festival. That was your idea, Jamal. <laughs> Why do you even care about money anyway? And out there in the pride land, slapping your little tiki bongos all day. <laughs> you know what, Jamal? Why don't you go back to your little bungalow in the savannah and keep pretending civilization doesn't exist, all right? My god, Dr. Robotnik. Just look at him. An awe-inspiring pillar of sheer manliness. Women want him, men want him. I bet if I gave him a swift kick down a bowling alley, he'd score a strike every time. Finally, this fucking video is over. Don't subscribe. I was about to have a goddamn meltdown. Oh. Oh. Ugh.